Turn me up, bro. Yeah. Hey, we don't do no talking. Say less, say less. Jimmy Kevin. Great. Long live. Free. Say we don't do no talking. Hi everyone, welcome to the second video in the Bridging the Gap series where we talk with other film professionals in the industry to help strengthen our own crafts and learn more from each other. And today we answer the question, what makes good ADR? And to answer that question, we're going to meet with ADR mixer, Greg Crawford. Now Greg has over 500 film and television credits and has been an ADR mixer on shows such as Avengers, Spider-Man, Ant-Man, just to name a few. Let's just go ahead and get right to it. Greg, thank you so much for coming on the channel. Good to be here, brother. And to start out, what makes what makes good ADR? Well, there's they talk about the three Ps: pitch, performance, and placement. So what we listen to, you record on set. You and I have done a scene. We've got this thing, and maybe I'm down here that day. Well, the actor comes in to, to revoice that scene. It's the middle of the afternoon. There's a brightly lit room, and they come in, and it's like they start doing the ADR, and it's like they're not back there because the, the intent is always everybody's intent is to try to keep as much production as possible production wins if at all possible so sometimes we do surgical adr where you'll take you know it's just like either there's a rustle or something or there's somebody places a cup down something over the line that we have to replace in many ways we can just go in and grab a word grab a syllable grab an s you know we, that that preserves the performance um, so that's that's why you have to be really listening the whole time for their pitch or their, you know, like, are you back in your throat a little bit? There's a lot of ways people project. So as an ADR mixer, you do try to help them through that those things. And then uh, secondly, you know, then that goes into the pitch and then performance. You know, it's like, what's the intent? You know, you really, you look angry or you look happy or you look sad, but your voice isn't selling that with your face. And we'll help folks go through that. And then placement. Um, when, I've, when I've had boom mixers come into our room, we've got a big room, a lot of airspace, um, and surprisingly, I keep pushing them back. What we're doing is listening to the, the performance you captured, and then all day, every day, I'll say, can you stay, step up, take a half step back, take a full step back. Can you just, as you finish it, just turn your turn? And we, that's what we're listening to, those, those weird little nuanced pieces of the performance so that then we give the, the dialogue mixer the chance to save production and maybe just sneak in that one little piece. So uh, I wanted to talk about microphones yeah. because on a production set, I'm using different types of mics for interiors, exteriors, different types of lav mics, depending upon what we're dealing with, with wardrobe or how we have to mic a talent, how much of mic selection and or even room size and, and distances of mics play a role in, in the quality of what you're getting and how are those decisions made? Uh, well, generally we, we are, uh, you, that information passes along, so we, we try to use the same mics they use in production. Pretty much it's, it's you know, our, our, our go-to almost every day is, is you know, COS 11 and, and a 50. But we keep, you know, there's, there's a stack of different shotgun mics we have here, and then we rent all the time. And sometimes we'll do, I've done four channels where I've had two booms, a lav, and a, and a U87. Mm. Um, there's, there's one um, great post-production company I work with that, always requests U87s and they, they won't even they won't even ask for a lot. They'll just <laughs> So large di how yeah. how far are you typically just out of curiosity working with the distance I mean, on a large diaphragm yeah, you're condenser. Mar you're still going back at the you know yeah. at, at you know at boom distance. Um, but basically we're yeah we're we're directed on what to use. I don't, I don't And and that's interesting to me because you guys have the flexibility and you have the flexibility to use two shotgun mics at the yeah. same time yeah, yeah. or three yeah. or yeah. because you know if we have a second boom out well we're just getting other coverage usually right. another yeah, yeah. camera's looking one way one's looking this way and, and we're doing our best to to get both of those what about room size so obviously on our film sets that i'm working on we might be in a practical location with really 
uh, large ceilings or we might be in a small interior space or on a stage, like, how important is that for you? Well, that's room size. So that's, I think that's, that's the key is that that's why the room we have is as big as it is. Because the one thing you, you, you can do a lot with, with processing, but early reflections, you can tell a booth is a booth, you know, mm -hmm. a small room. So if, let's say you're shot on a big stage and then you go in to do ADR in a small room. Um, you can hear it, even with reverb and it, trying to move proximity uh, of the, to the mic, it's still gonna be, it's gonna jump out a bit. In the big room, what we have is the benefit of air. Mm -hmm. And air is, you know, it, so now I can, you know, if, if we're outside, let's say, and the actor's yelling, yeah. you know, in a booth, they're gonna yell and you're gonna instantly hear all mm -hmm. that, mm -hmm. you know, that small room come up and it's gonna be like this. We're here, that's where I can say, step up, step back. I have, these gobos that I can tighten the room up more if I want to. And so that's why the, I have the curtains in there. And so, so what I've been able to do with those gobos and the curtains is A, take advantage again of the air. So if you're outside, big stage, I can match that. Uh, and at the same time, then I can, what it's that process of stepping up, stepping back, you know, and that's really, it's just, it, that's what we're listening for is that match to that microphone that you used. So, so as you know, I mean, as production sound mixers, we create a mix track. Is that reference that you're using when you're trying to do that sort of matching that you're talking about typically done from the mix track only, or are you getting a poly file? And For the most part, when I start doing ADR, they've, they've spent a significant amount of time on it, on the, on the dialogue editing, and then um, we are giving a, given a comp track. So I'm generally given the video, dialogue only, Sound effects only, music only. And that's part of it. That's why we have the name Mixer in our name. In, in doing ADR, as the actor's doing it, you, you say you're outside, you got all this traffic, and you're talking, and then we're looping a line, all that disappears, and it's like, wow, that's really weird. That's not going to match. So our job is to, if the sound effect fill doesn't fill it in, I'll find a fill to make it easier for the actor to, to hear, you know, so they're not faked out by, by, the process, really. I mean, that's wow. that's the other part of the deal too. Is that, you know, I always joke. There are three things people don't want to do. Number one, go to the dentist. Number two, go to the DMV. Number three, do ADR. <laughs> so, so that's part of the process too. Is that you really have to, you know, keep it lively, keep it moving, keep people engaged. And and if if you freak them out, it's like you know, you know, you're they hear their their performances in a vacuum. Um, you know, it can go south pretty quickly. So. So typically when, you know, when they decide to do the ADR, then it's gone through dialogue editorial first. Right. So it's not like the assistant editor or editor saying, hey, that's not there and having to look through the ISOs. There's, there's a audio post process and play typically yeah. before those decisions typically. are made. Yeah. Because a lot of times we'll, we will do, there will be a pass and it's like, oh, I don't know if we can fix that. It doesn't get to the stage yet. So we'll do ADR and with the, with the understanding that Good chance the dialogue mixers can be able to fix it on the stage, but let's let's get it as a coverage. So we do a lot of coverage. We do a lot of stuff that you know. I'm, I listen and think, wow, oh, that's that's pretty easy. Isotope hack. That'll be that that'll they'll use production. Well, well, that's good for me to know because if something is missed in the mix track and it's in the ISO, I'll often make a note on the sound report on this particular line on this take can be found on ISOs. I hope people read the notes because there, there, there are times where we, and this came up just recently, where there's a big, big scene, a party scene, wedding scene, and um, their main characters, you know, everybody's in, in in this giant room, but they're toasting and cheers and, and stuff, and the can't, you know, nobody's wired except the principals who are doing most of the talking. So then we went back and had to loop a handful of people, you know, glass clinking cheers, yay, you know, whatever, little bits and pieces to pepper them in because there was no coverage on them at all. Mm -hmm. And it was pretty clear, it's like, I know who that dude is, and they're talking, and you know, their, yeah. their mouths are moving, they're not making any sound. You know, if it's not a principal, we'll be covered in loop group, but, um, but yeah, and, and that's the other and thing. talk about Loop Group. So Loop Group is, so again, if you had a big party sequence, New York City street, um, department store, what, you know, or you, you know, you were shooting at a restaurant the other night, and you've got a group of people, and you know, you've, you're recording the principals, and everybody else in the background going, you know, not making any noise. Mm -hmm. Well, the Loop Group will come in, and five, six, seven, eight, 
maybe bigger group of actors, will then watch the action. And a good loop group, like if you, let's say you're doing a, a, a weekly cop show or something. Well, they, you know, so as all those police officers are walking by in the background, shuffling papers and everything, they're talking, they know the, the chief of police name. They know the streets around there. They, they, so they come in with all this information about what's happening in, the, in this world and they'll fill it all in. So you'll, you'll have a loop group will say, okay, I, I'll take, we'll, we'll be that couple back in the corner. And you'll watch and you go, <laughs> you know, do all the, all the goofy stuff you would do in the restaurant. And that gives the mixers a chance to feather that in underneath. It sounds like you're actually in that room, but as you and I know, there's only two actors recorded at the time. And that's generally done with loop group. And even um, breaths and efforts, uh, at a certain point, there are some shows where uh, they'll just have loop group do the breaths and efforts for the actors because of you know, fighting sequences and stuff. That, that we're constantly adding those things just to bring life to it. Um, well, Greg, I have learned so much. Well, Thank know, you thanks. so much for being here and Fun. on the channel. And if you're new to the channel uh, and haven't subscribed yet, please go ahead and do so. This channel is dedicated to the craft, the production sound mixing and location recording. And we'll see you guys soon.